We've hit that time in the month where we have tons of half finished projects that just need to get done. So I feel like it's a never ending cycle and it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just a fact of life that sometimes you get busy and you never finish the things that you do on live videos. So today we're gonna to be working on finishing all of these half finished projects, but also painting a new dresser so we can get some more furniture in the shop. The top on this is pretty shiny. I'm just taking some 220 grit sandpaper and just roughing it up a little bit so that it doesn't have that high sheen. It's gonna help the paint stick and adhere, especially on the top that's gonna to get the most use. So we had planned on fixing this a while back and Jamie did some repair, just used some lightweight spackle and filled in where all of the old hardware had kind of gouged. And then we just sanded that smooth. And this part here will get covered up when we paint it. Well, also it was missing a ton of hardware. So I filled in the holes because it'll get a single pull. Cause on these curvy dressers, it's almost impossible to find hardware that will work with the curves much easier to just throw one big knob. Here's the lock and key mold. We actually have not used this one yet and I feel like it's totally underutilized because it's got these awesome details in it where you can take a modern dresser and make it look more antique. And whereas this dresser is totally not old, we wanna give it a vibe that'll go with our shop. This dresser is kind of short and long and we've got a big wide section on the front. I'm gonna go ahead and go with this keyhole down in the bottom, but there's actually quite a lot of great options here for some fun keyholes. I even like this long one here if you had like an armoire that you wanted to put it on. I also like this here because you could drill a hole and put a knob in it and then this would give it a whole nother look. It's a really great mold. You can pick these molds up at jamierayvintage.com. I'm just lightly dusting this with some cornstarch so that way my paper clay doesn't stick in there. Next, I'm gonna take a little bit of air dry paper clay, roll it in kind of a snake form about the length of what it is there. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and push this into my form. I way overestimated that. You've got a lot there. <laughs> if you just push against the edge, then you can get a nice clean release. And it's got the micro rim on it, which really makes it great for a nice smooth finish. And the other thing about using cornstarch that's really important the easier you can get the clay out of the mold, the more detail it's going to retain. If you have to work to get it out, you're gonna lose some of that detail. So I'm just gonna flip this over and use the back of this to pull it out. And there we go. I'm gonna make two more, then we'll glue those on. I'm using Gorilla Glue. It's a max strength construction adhesive and clear. If you can get your surface flat, that's the easiest way to apply these. If not, you could always just tape them, but we like the Gorilla Glue because it is nice and thick and it'll hold things on where you put them in place. Oh, so delicate with your big thumb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using DIY paint here with gravel road and it's a nice light gray color. I've got my Paint Pixie number 12 brush. This is a great brush for getting a ton of paint on a piece in a big hurry. I'm gonna put it on here just real quick and then I'll smooth my brush strokes out when I'm done. You don't wanna really overwork the paint, that first coat, your tack coat. So just get coverage on there and then worry about full coverage when you do your second or even your touch up coat. So I got my paint on there. Now I'm gonna smooth out those brush strokes a little bit and make them nice and uniform, long strokes across the whole top. I do the same thing when applying sealer. I get it on there and then I smooth it out. All right, so we've decided that we're gonna be doing the drawers in Tarnished Pearl. It is a creamy white that's on the gray side. So I feel like it's gonna work really well with the Scrabble Road. And then the end result, when we go ahead and add that old and gray as a glaze, it'll kind of have an overall theme and kind of a tone on tone look. So I'm very careful as I go through painting the mold because it is still not quite all the way dry. I didn't pick my brush correctly. I wanted a flat brush for this big surface, but I think I'm gonna come back with a detail brush for all those little beads. I've switched to a detail brush because that flat brush is really great for those flat surfaces, but 
it does not get into the nooks and crannies and I'm actually pulling out some of the paint on that mold. Now I can take this detail brush and really get these beads painted well. While we're waiting for paint to dry on that dresser, I'm going to finish painting some of these smalls. Jamie's finishing up the drawers and I'm gonna paint this frame here to match this frame that we did a while ago and the other one's just been waiting. All right, coat number two going on here. This Because it was a real shiny, slick surface, we might end up doing three coats just to get full coverage. Or like I say, it's like a, a coat, two and a half coats. Well, what happens is there's just really nothing for this paint to soak into. It's literally just sitting on top of what isn't real wood. And so you kind of get that resistance when you pull against it just because it's a slick surface. So if you would, if you wanted to, you could sand it a lot and that would probably help. But in my case, I'm just gonna put on two good coats and then I'll come back and uh, touch up where I need to, where it's still looking a little bit streaky. So in this case where it is super shiny, you're definitely gonna wanna have a soft hand. So I'm not pushing very hard when I'm brushing this. I'm just gliding the brush along there. And once I kind of cover an area, I might smooth it out a little bit, but I'm not gonna overwork the paint. Otherwise you're gonna pull it right back off because it's just such a slick surface. Once this is sealed and cured, it's not like the paint's not gonna stick to it. This is just while it's fresh and before it's sealed because the sealer will actually make it so that way the paint is no longer water soluble. All right, this little frame's painted all the way up. I'm just gonna give it a little wet distress here. I've got clear wax on here. I'm gonna seal it before I put the glass back on and then I'll buff it a little later. Some of these things have already been painted and they just have been waiting to get distressed and sealed. This is a mix of Petticoat Pink with White Swan 50-50 in DIY paint. I'm just gonna hit the high spots with the damp cloth here and we'll go ahead and get that sealed up with the clear wax in just a minute. So these frames, nothing's gonna go inside of them. We're just gonna sell them as is. A lot of times people like to hang something else inside them for some extra detail. Just gonna wet distress them, they'll get some clear wax and they'll be ready to go on the floor. You know, just over here waiting for paint to dry. <laughs> I feel like most of our life is waiting for paint to dry. That's why stuff gets halfway done and then we get busy doing other things and we get distracted. <laughs> I feel like my ADD kicks in and I'm like, okay, I'm done with this. Yeah, I'm over that project. So if that dresser takes too much longer to dry, I'm gonna have everything I had set out to paint and distress and seal done. I don't know, do I just ink this whole thing? Are you gonna do the all over? So we have the rose toile. We were gonna try the crockery, we tried one and we didn't like the way that looked. What do you think? Don't I... make that face. <laughs> do you want my honest opinion? I think that looks cool. I, I did get it on crooked. there a little crooked. <laughs> Quick, wipe it off! I feel like we should do a floral because then you can just kind of do it all over it. It doesn't have to be centered. They need something more on them. So instead of just leaving these plain white, we're going to go ahead and put a whole IOD stamp on and get as much surface area as we can. No shifting. We'll see. I don't have the best, steadiest hands in the world. I like it. it. Works. I'm gonna look away. Yeah, they look good. Okay. It works. Yeah, that's cool. I think the words are a nice like break up from the, and you could do this down here. So I'm just using a damp uh, Clorox Lysol wipe, I don't even know what brand it is, just to bring out this beaded detail. I don't want to use sandpaper because it will flatten it, and this is just gonna wet distress it and bring back that dark. So we decided to spray this because 
we're going to be glazing it. And to control the glaze, we like to have a nice seal coat on before we do that. That way we can wipe as much off or leave as much on as we want and it doesn't absorb down into the paint. It just sits on top of the sealer that's there. I'm using Sweet Pickens Top Coat to seal this and then it'll take me about five minutes to put a coat on there. I'll probably do two since we're glazing it to make sure it's nice and sealed and then we'll get the glazing done and be finished with this. We're gonna be using the old and gray as a glaze. I always recommend sealing it first the way that Zeb did with the top coat before you glaze. That way you have more control because this DIY paint is really porous so any chalk or DIY type paint is just gonna soak that glaze up. So if you don't seal it, it could be a little bit of a muddy mess. And I like to just use an artist brush and then I just come through anywhere that I wanna put the glaze and brush it on and then Zeb's gonna follow behind me and wipe it off. We're just gonna use a dry, lint-free rag and pull it off. If for some reason you need to pull off more, you can always also use a magic eraser very carefully or a damp rag. Okay, so I'm just using a artist brush to get down into the details because otherwise you're gonna waste a lot of glaze and it's gonna get all over the place. A smaller, finer brush just gives you a little bit more control. So on something like this, it's best if you just work in small sections because it will dry out pretty quick since it's so thin and then you might need a damp cloth or a magic eraser and some extra elbow grease to get it off where you don't want it. And it does have a built-in sealer, so once we're done, we don't have to put any more sealer over the top of this, it's all finished. So in between customers and shipping and our day, we got a ton of projects done. We still have probably like 10 more days like this and we might have this bathroom <laughs> cleaned out. But I am glad to say that these are all finished. I love the way the dresser came out. I felt like that dresser was a little bit more fancy than something we normally do. So I wanted to take it up a little notch but still have an old world feel. So we don't glaze a lot of things because it is a lot of extra work but it does make something look awesome. It gives it kind of a really nice old aged look. You could do the same thing we did with the old and gray with dark and decrepit. It has a built-in sealer in it and it works great as a glaze. You can also take our crystal chandelier liquid patina and add any color of DIY paint you want and make a glaze of any color. The biggest, most important step is make sure you seal that piece first and use an artist brush to apply it if you want it to be delicate. If you want a more all-over glaze, then go to town. Make sure you guys are hitting up jamierayvintage.com for the paint and products we use today. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.